Welcome back everybody to the Hearthstone Global Games. Gaskin here, joined by Lorinda, and we're just about ready to get into Israel versus USA. Definitely an exciting one. Israel versus USA, both teams are one and one, so plenty to go for here. Plenty of playful, let's take a look at the group and talk about the implications then. Okay. Now, funnily enough, Neil, Belgium are actually through to the last 16. Uh -huh. No matter what happens with this result... But they're bottom. I know, because if United States lose, it doesn't matter what the scoreline is, they could be tied with Belgium, but Belgium have a better tiebreaker because Belgium beat Czech Republic. And of course, if Israel lose, they have a worse game record than Belgium, and that means that Belgium are just through. Even though Czech Republic have a negative game record, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, doesn't make a difference, because Czech Republic already through with that 2-1 and one record, so it's going to be... A very interesting one for US and Israel. Basically, whoever wins goes through, whoever loses goes out. So all to play for. Yeah, I'm just looking at that because the US beat Belgium, right? Mm -hmm. If they end up tied with Belgium, the first tiebreaker is that weird... The first tiebreaker is a game, game wins. And Belgium have a zero game difference. Yes. Which USA will get the points for because that's the team they beat. And Belgium will have a minus one because they beat the Czech Republic who have a minus one as we look at the lineups here. We might but, want to get that one checked. Okay, we'll double check that one, but isn't it based on where they are in the league table? No, it's based on their game. I win thought it was on loss. their win rate. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll, we'll it's because check Czech Republic have won the group, yeah. but they have a negative win rate. That's so that, make yeah, that's going to be very interesting. Yeah, it is very messy. Talking of very interesting, here are some pictures of Israel. Oh, Israel. Very saucy uh, place, Israel. And of course, home to the Dead Sea. Israel is the lowest point in the earth. Did you know that? The lowest point in the whole Earth. Yeah, it is actually 1,388 foot below sea level, the Dead Sea. Well, I do know that it's one of the Israeli players' favourite place because it's so relaxing. Oh. And there's no fish in there, I know. I'm just going to interrupt your fact. There isn't. There's a lot of salt, though. Yeah, I know, exactly. And that's, you can you know, float. If it's somebody's favourite location because they, they like all the salt, then I'm probably their favourite. Impossible to dive into the Dead Sea, apparently. Why, why is that? Because of the amount of salt. You can't physically dive into it. So you what just, happens? You just, just fall float. on top? You just kind of like slap onto it. And just, you're there. You're just there. It's because of the amount of salt that's there. So, give us a fact about the USA. No. No? I was born there. Oh. I do actually have a fact about the USA. There are three towns in America called Santa Claus. There you are. That's one of my funnest facts about America. Let's have a look at the matchup. It is going to follow up today. It's going to be Israel versus United States. And we are going to have Paladin versus Druid to kick things off. Hot Meowth versus Hattel. Hot Meowth, of course. I mean, well, we can talk about this whole United States lineup, and you might notice that Dog's playing twice. It's because Firebat's not actually playing today, yeah. which is a big loss. I thought maybe Dog was just trying to keep up with Dog Gug 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 that we're going to see by in Shanghai by putting his name on there twice, like Dog the Dog. The amount of Dogs. But uh, yeah, that's. I mean, losing Firebat is a big thing, right? It is a big deal, yeah. Especially considering when I spoke to Firebat, he was saying how he was pretty much calling the shots. Like, he was deciding what decks the team were going to be playing most of the time. But without him, let's see how the United States get along. Israel, they're already. They've got their pirate hats on. And maybe we're going to see a little bit of a faces the place from them throughout this series. But not going to be this game. Paladin Israel, versus Druid. One of the big revelations of this entire tournament for me, I think... It's easy to say, oh, they got through, so we missed call. That's not always the case. There were one or two teams that got through that we didn't call that got through a little bit on other teams' results and such like. But Israel did it all themselves. Oh, my goodness. They might not have much fun in this game, though. Uh, yeah. They I might know not. what's going to happen on turn one. All right. Go on. Hit me. Ow! <laughs> you did ask. I did ask. All right, I can clarify now. I've just done the calculations in my head. I was talking about, of course, uh, USA going out. Um, if they lose 3-0 or 3-1, then they're not tied with Belgium on the game difference. They're behind them. Yeah. If they lose 3-2, that's when they're tied with Belgium. And then the we've got to have a fight. And then we get into the, okay, who has the better win rate against yeah. other win rates. That's and, what it gets And that's because, because the Czech Republic went 2-1, and one, but they have a negative win rate. That's yes. why it gets a bit messy, because head-to-head -head comes down after that, even though... They would have. Anyway, we will talk yeah. about that. Hopefully, that doesn't happen, but we'll explain it if it does. It just means Belgium are in a pretty good spot, yeah. actually, and which is quite surprising considering they were bottom of the table. But now, Hearthstone's happening, and you know when Hearthstone hits you hardest? When you innovate a fledgling. Yeah, at least they've got some stuff to deal with the making a board. Um, so you can play a chum and a Vialfin here and just say, okay, your fledgling gets one go. There's a crazy alchemist, by the way, there. 
There is a crate. That's a way of dealing with Doomsayers. It's also a way of making your 2-4 Inquisitors kill fledglings. And Crazed Alchemist is something that we've seen in Paladin. I think it was Muzzy's list that he submitted to the HGT this weekend. He has Crazed Alchemist and Anixia listed here. Okay. Uh, plus three health on this fledgling, and the fledgling will die. Because the Crazed Alchemist will flip a -roo the 4-2, the 2-4. flip a -roo. Yep. So now you've got two options here for Hot Meowth. Uh, of course, hmm. the majority of the time you're going to end up sending that fledgling face. Yep. But first of all, you're going to play either Blood Cell Corsair, which will bring out patches, as well as Mark of the Lotus, or you could just go wide with Firefly. Uh, you you don't trade, however. We saw a situation yesterday where we saw the fledgling trade. Right. That's not going to happen here. But the 1-1 one, one is going to go into the oh chum. Oh my god, he's going to trade! I lied. I lied. I thought Neil he wasn't going to trade. So... Yeah, this makes sense. There was a conversation last yeah. night about this. All right, yesterday I didn't agree with the <laughs> trade, but here I 100% agree with the trade. 100. 101%. Good man. Meanwhile, Firefly into Elemental, into Mark of the Lotus, looks like a half-decent Hearthstone turn to me. Looks like a very good Hearthstone turn. And Hot Meowth is just ripping through Israel now. He can finally send that Fletchling to face. Finally, I've turned three. <laughs> oh, plus three health seems decent. Summon plants also seems decent. Depends what particular thing you want to play around. But yeah, just going to make it a five, six. And if you've got a quality consecration, you're three turns too early. Ah, what do you do about a board? Is it? Is it already time? It's time for bottom right, buddy. There was a guy in Twitch chat earlier called bottom right, buddy, and I was so happy about it. He talks to me sometimes. I think that may be, he may be my fault. <laughs> you I'm so sorry. Him. I'm so sorry, Twitch chat. He's like your Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Frankenstein's monster just creates bottom right, buddy. <laughs> uh, but less of that and more of fledglings hitting face. Stealth seems pretty appropriate. You're getting to turn four. In turn four usually means uh, True Silver Champion is a possibility. However, plus one, plus one does just put you out of that range anyway. And this is just silly at the moment. Yeah, I think you could pretty much take anything at that point and you're in a comfortable spot. And USA, I'm going to put my neck on the line here and say I think USA are going to take a 1-0 lead. I think you give Blessing of Kings to Fledgling <laughs> and then you move your mouse to bottom right. One thing I've really enjoyed about the Israeli team, especially as they are still trying to make a name for themselves, because um, Hatul and Glazer in particular have had very good results, is they don't they don't take themselves too seriously, even though they're really good. If that makes any sense, yeah, that they're still able to keep a bit of perspective on the fact of you know what, this is just silly, and we're going to take part in the silliness rather than get salty by the silliness. And that is the damage that Token Druid could do. And I almost, almost fluffed it when I was like, nah, you're not going to trade with the fledgling here. And then I was like, oh, wait, Patches gets charged. Who'd have thought? Who would have thought? Always helps, doesn't it? We had a conversation <laughs> yesterday where there was a trade situation with fledgling, and Neil agreed with it. I didn't agree with it. I didn't agree with it. Okay, I you thought it was acknowledged a, an option it. that was acknowledgeable. A decent option, said Neil. Uh, we'll have a look <laughs> at the next game anyway. I don't talk it like was that. So quick uh, that we're going to go into game two, and it's my favourite. It's the mage versus the mage, and it's the young savage himself, Amnesiac, against Murray. Amnesiac, the young savage. He's not so young anymore. Is he not? Well, no. Sorry, that was you. I was talking about, <laughs> talking about someone else. Oh, damn it. I, mean, I am getting old now, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, Amnesiac, uh, of course, last week, the, the USA fell when we were thinking they were going to be able to maybe topple the Czech Republic and they'd move on to the last 16. You think he went a bit far with the banana thing last week, given uh, that he lost? Considering he lost, yes. If he had won, I would have condoned it and I would have said, amazing. Yeah. Uh, props to you. However, you've got to remember that your opponent can't see your webcam. Yeah, until afterwards. So it's too late. There's no All they're going to do is we won. Let's have a look at Amnesiac. Oh, he ate bananas. Oh, we killed him. It was a great meme, though. I'm sure. It, I mean, Amnesiac is definitely a lot more chill than he used to be. Um, you know, he's still savage, but he's savage in a calculated savagery now, rather than rather than just coming out with it. A calculated fashion. A calculated. Do you think fashion. that for Israel then? Okay, we we underestimated them throughout yeah, phase we one. Did. But they're going up against some of the biggest names in Hearthstone. Does that intimidation factor ever come into it, do you think? 
So there's two ways of looking at it, and it depends. I think that Israel will look at it on the good way, is that no one expects us to be here, so we've got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Or you can go, oh, my goodness, if we win this, we're going to be famous and get all uptight about it and make a big mess. That's a bad way to go. You don't want to make a big mess about it. So you don't want to do that. No. But Glaze has played enough high-level Hearthstone now um, in various events where I think he won't be that intimidated anyway. Coupled with the fact Israel just seems to have a great team spirit. They seem to be taking it all in their stride. And they have had that underdog tag until maybe two weeks ago when I sort of started going, OK, we're not saying a sorry anymore. We, we understand you're good. Maybe that they can just take it a little bit more easy than the other teams. Yeah, We're getting to this point, though, with Hearthstone that so many players now have achieved something that is monumentous and is incredible that you can't be intimidated by any old player. You just need to accept, like, yes, okay, pretty much everyone now in the Hearthstone scene is good at the game. We don't need to be scared if they've won a tournament and we haven't won a tournament. It's, uh, it's one of those situations. I mean, there's good at Hearthstone, and we acknowledge there's 192 players in this tournament. There's probably... A hundred that people want to call world class, but you've got to redefine it. You've got to say, well, if there's a hundred that's world class, they're not world class. There's only going to be 20 or 25 that are one more level above that. And America's stacked full of them. Very stacked. Uh, the USA, just, sorry. The USA, yes. Okay, get it right. Not America. I can say that as an American born man. Can you? No, I can't really. I was born in America. But anyway, I think we're about to re get this game going. Uh, it's going to be Mage versus Mage. And it's going to be the secret variant, or at least what we would think is the secret variant. And I say that because we have seen Kieran Tor Mage and Secrets just thrown into Discover Mage. Well, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, after you said that, came into the hand and a little bit more of a clue that it will be very secrety. Yeah, based. And just a little bit quicker as well. But going up against something that's more slow from Amnesiac, you can tell that, of course, because of the Doomsayer. And the Ice Barrier, that's the thing. The, Normally, the Doomsayer on its own isn't 100% giveaway with the Ice Barrier as well. This is definitely going to be a Freeze Mage variant. And I say that because there's cards like Medivh in Freeze Mage variants sometimes. There is, and it's something that I was having a discussion with George C about. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, he's my, my good old pal, George C. You know, the other young Savage, yeah. the UK young Savage. He was saying Medivh, he put it in his Freeze Mage to be better against the likes of a Control Paladin or, a, or right. a Priest matchup. And it makes sense, to be honest. It does make sense. But why... You just... I have mentioned George C about six times today. You have. We mention him every week because because he's not in the tournament anymore, basically. Yeah. And also, if you mention him whilst Amnesiac is on the screen, when he watches that VOD back, he'll probably be slightly triggered. What to do? What Plus, it's a way to get tweeted at by George C. That is true. Which is always nice. It's always nice. All right. Amnesiac. This is, this is the bit you enjoy, right? Where you can see both hands and you, the players can't. Yeah, I enjoy that anyway when I'm casting Hearthstone really? because I feel like I am watching from above and I'm watching everything unfold like my own beautiful world right in front of me. Okay. However, a beautiful world, me. nothing on the board just yet. Murray saving back that coin. Of course, the coin can be very important for something like a counter spell. And also, he has no idea what he's playing against yet. But he's losing. <laughs> he's 29. That's a potion of polymorph. All right, here comes good stuff, though. Just getting Kieran Tor. That is a potion of polymorph. Here comes Sorry. the good stuff. It's going to be good stuff. Kieran Tor into secrets, into source apprentice, into more secrets is just good stuff. It, I do not need to retract that comment. Yeah, the huh? the amount of momentum that Israel are going to gain from this turn is going to be massive. And the good thing is it's not a mirror entity. None of these secrets. Because if they were to play that, then a Doomsayer would quickly put them... Would, would stop them in their tracks. Instead, they that potion of Polymorph, I think, is going to win this game. I'm not sure how yet, but I feel there aren't enough minions in Amnesiac's deck, most likely, that don't mind being Polymorphed. I think that it's just going to win this game. I don't know. I haven't quite pieced together how it's going to do it, but it's going to catch a Doomsayer or an Acolyte of Pain or an Alexstrasza. It's going to mess up a plan so badly. It's funny you say that, because those three cards are in... Uh, in well, the, the, other, the other cards are like Antonidas. Yep, that would be, well, that would be, be a painful. mess as well. Uh, the only one that's like handy is like maybe a Mana Worm sneaks in there. Mm -hmm. There just aren't many cards that can survive... That, that nothing can survive it, but that don't mind being polymorphed here. Yeah, certainly if uh, there is a big board built by Murray and then you see Frost over Doomsayer come out and there's already uh, a potion of Polymorph there, then that's going to get pretty awkward. Unfortunately, a fireball is counterspelled away. And that is going to be frustrating for Amnesiac, but 
He would have known it was a possibility when the secret was down. And now Israel can continue to just be even more of a thorn in the side of the United States here. Yeah, they, they can actually start protecting this board and doing quite a lot of damage. If they can get decent damage on a protected board, that's exactly how Secret Mage wants to operate. Uh, they can get into a good, good spot here. And... I mean, Potion of Polymorph, Coin, Crystal Run is one option here, just... Or, or Counterspell, either way. Just get that two mana Crystal Runner down. Yeah, I think you do it now rather than later as well. Something I've always said about Crystal Runner is, as a naught mana 5-5 five five on about turn 7, sometimes it's not good enough. As a two mana 5-5 five five on turn 4 or 5, it can be absurdly good because the ways to deal with it are just so much fewer. And they've gone with a counter spell, which means if the second fireball points at it and gets countered, this lot's going to get through for another 11 damage next turn. Yeah, regardless of how Amnesiac wants to try and deal with this, if he wants to Frost Nova Doomsayer, that Frost Nova gets counter right. spelled. So he's going to test for Mirror Entity first. And then get the Frost Nova counter spelled, and the Doomsayer is just going to gain 7 health, effectively. Effectively. I mean... Alternatively, you could play the barrier if you wanted to, if you're thinking about Counterspell, if you want to keep that Frost Nova, but I think yeah. you've already played the Doomsayer at this point, so... I think the discussion goes like what you've just said. Our barrier would be possibly better if they've got Counterspell, and then USA are just going to say, well, you know what? They had one Counterspell. What's the chance they've got both? It's not good, and Amnesiac's not going to be impressed with this outcome. And this is where Amnesiac has changed a little bit over the last year or so. Um, he didn't show any outward emotion when that went with him against him on the mat. It's just like, okay, well, Tilting's not going to help me. I'm just going to carry on playing Hearthstone now. We knew there was a possibility. It happened. Yeah. And, of course, emotion from a player, whether it's negative or positive, is always enjoyable to watch, and it's nice to see. However, you do need to contain your emotions in some situations because otherwise the game can get the better of you. Yeah, and I think a team environment really helps a lot of players focus on that. It's like, well, if I crack up now... It's fine if I'm letting myself down. I can ruin my own life. But I'm ruining somebody else's life at the same time. It's not so much fun. Yeah. It's like you're driving a car. You've got to take care of your passengers as well, right? You have a responsibility. Billy? Yeah. Uh, which, which country is that from? Well, every every country. If you're driving a car and you have passengers, part, it's your part responsibility. Taiwan, apparently. Yeah, well, yeah. Cars have right of way rather than passengers in Taiwan. So now there are a various amount of options for Murray to deal with this Doomsayer. Dealing with the Doomsayer is, of course, priority number one. Number uno. Uh, I mean, it should be. Okay, what other consideration is there? Then? Hit them in the face for 11 and fireball them. Okay. Put them on five. What? Do you really want to sacrifice this board? I don't think so, but it's when you say it's number one priority, you can just hit them in the face for 11 and fireball them. It's a thing you can do that's not completely ridiculous. Well... I mean, they're not going to fireball them, but they are just going to send that much damage to set up for lethal next turn. Yep. And there's currently no ice block in the hand of Amnesiac. Yeah. And I said priority number one was doom killing Doomsayer. You know what priority number one actually is? What? It's qualifying for the top 16 yeah. of the Hearthstone Global Games. Definitely is. And they chose that option rather than killing the Doomsayer. I mean, it's a risk. I like the risk, but it is a risk. And now there's, there's nothing, so you have to promote your So how team. would it have gone wrong? Uh, the way it would have gone wrong So this wrong goes right, Ice Block into what? Ice Block into... And then they Fireball Frostbolt you and play a Sorcerer's Apprentice or something. Yeah, they do that. They Fireball Frostbolt Sorcerer's Apprentice, but not in that order. There's an Ice Block. So that will keep you alive. Sorry, my co-caster seems to be uh, slowly <laughs> just coughing himself. Popping his guts up here. So this is we're going to find out how this could go wrong now because the ice block is present. It is. And ice barrier is not going to do very little. They've got to obviously play the ice block. And so now Source and Apprentice will be played into Fireball Frostbolt. You can fire. You can actually Fireball just ping Frostbolt, right? No, you can't. That's not how numbers right. work. Oh, picked up more burn. This is why I was going to say how can it go wrong. Because yeah, that's the way. You get the ice block and then you just pick up more burn. <coughs> yeah. And you have a 3-2 minion. The way, it go, the way it would have gone wrong is not being able to pop them at one. 
You would have popped them at two. Well, they are still going to pocket two, but... But now they've drawn burn. Yeah. Them. And it was a very aggressive play, and I really like it from Israel. And this is about as bad as it could have got, right? Um, forgetting the fact it came from a glyph, playing both these secrets in the same turn is actually the punish. Uh, okay. So it's going to be proct at two, but there's just Firelands next turn. So now United States need to draw into another right. block. And that helps. That might help. Next, uh, what, Should help. 50, they've, already... 50 have, they've had one ice barrier. No, the barrier no actually, can... they've not had one ice block, so there's more chance. Yeah, it might even be 2 0, depending exactly how they're built. Yeah, depending on how many ice <laughs> barriers they've got. Ice barriers? Yeah. Are you alright? <laughs> no, yeah, not really. No. I'll be fine. I mean, you can hold the cough button down all you like, but I still think everything's coming through my microphone anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, you might as well just not. Just you can hold your away. cough button down at the same time. Alright, just let me know and we'll time it, alright? Right, I'm going to cough. One, two, three, go. Perfect. Done. There's, that second There's the ice block. block, so this could still go wrong, but can it? <laughs> well, you've got the ice block. They can now, again, only pop you on two. two. Yeah, and you might, you, you and might you get might to Alex Straza. Stay alive, and you might Alex Straza. Babbling Book can change that, because it can, of course, find you more burn. Now, if last turn they played the Sorcerer's Apprentice and done the two spells, they could now play the Babbling Book, because the Apprentice wouldn't have been dealt with. Just pointing that out. Yep. That one point might make all the difference. Because now they can't play the Babbling Book because of how this has turned out. Is there ever a world where you don't freeze the 7-6 because you want it to hit you in the face, so you gain one extra point of life? Don't think so, because you're not dead to anything different apart from double ping. Um, if it happens to hit you twice, for instance, mm -hmm. bad things are afoot at the Circle K. So then naturally you'd acolyte ping first. So how do you win this game? You win this game by sticking Alex Straza to the You board. win this game by surviving until next yep. turn and then <coughs> defensive Alex Straza. Yeah, and hope they don't draw any way of killing you in the meantime. And they've used a lot of their burns, so they shouldn't. So you could start off by acolyte pinging, or you can frostbolt and ping the 7-6 so that you can trade in and then kill off the 7-6 with a ping next turn. Or just you, you fireball. Yeah, that works out. So one of the things that could have happened the other way, if um, this big board had been kept, is maybe blizzards and freezers would be what they were scared of. Maybe they feel they never get any more damage anyway. As it happens, I think they'd have won if they'd done it the other way. I must admit. Two chances with Babbling Book. That's one flop. Are you going to flop again? That's still no damage. How is it going to go wrong? <laughs> How's that go? I don't know. I sounded like a Murloc then. You did indeed. I haven't seen the Murloc for a while, actually. don't know where it's gone. But yeah... All right. Amnesiac somehow still in this game can now defensive Alex Straza put himself back up to 15 and start searching for his own way of winning this game. And he has Eater of Secrets in hand as well. Yeah, and I mean, Alex Straza is just going to get this done at this rate. There was another ice barrier in the deck. thought there probably was. So there was a chance they just lost. Yeah. So would have this game been different if they had killed the Doomsayer? Maybe. I think it might. Well, of course it would have been it'd different. Been different I mean, but would it have been a different outcome with yeah, all the blizzards and frost novas and glyphs? What were the other options from the glyph was relevant as well because they wouldn't have needed the block. Blah, blah, blah. This is what I've loved about Mage Mirrors is that these are really the games that I want to go back and I want to analyze. Right. I want to look at the percentages and the likelihood of what went wrong here and there. By the way, this potion of polymorph is a big deal. It is a big deal. Because that's eight more damage that Alex Strauss is not going to get through because dealing with it was going to be awkward. The potion of polymorph dealt with it pretty well. And now we just have sheep versus books. Sounds like a really bad game for the tablet. Mm. Speaking of, apparently the average American spends more than 10 hours a day using an electronic device. Whose electronic device is it? Well, just anyone's, I guess. They spoil one. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense for Hearthstone players, right? Yeah. We've oh, only 10 hours a day? Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's what are they doing with the rest of the hours they're awake? Oh, I guess enough. Americans must sleep for like 14 hours a day. They should be playing more. Yeah. Or watching more. 
Yeah, electronic devices are pretty common oh. nowadays. Yeah, that's burn, but... But I think they can, they can attack for some damage as well. It's a case of whether they want to take down this Acolyte of Pain, though. Yeah, you could. I mean, you could just send four to face, then Volcanic Potion, then right. Fireball Ping if you wanted to. How much is that? That's 11. Pew. Pew. Bosh. So they don't want to give too much draw to the Acolyte, but... Oh! Takes down the sheep! So they could have pinged the sheep to keep their Acolyte... Uh, to keep their Sorcerer's Practice <laughs> alive, of course. Yeah. But... And then attacked with... Eh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's somewhat... It doesn't really matter either way, because it means now that they're trying to encourage two mana to go towards the Sorcerer's Apprentice, I guess. They've only procced one real block, right? The other one came from a glyph. Correct. So there is still uh, another block available. Eater of Secrets, because they need some way of doing damage, because Alex Straza has gone. And they know they're on the clock here, because... There is going to be damage come from Moe. He's going to have another Firelands at some point. That, however, is a total and utter brick. And it's crazy at first glance, isn't it? Playing an Eater of Secrets against a Mage and not even chewing down on a secret. Right. It's something I, I comment on often is knowing when to not get value out of your cards is one of the hardest things to learn in Hearthstone. Everyone can read a card and go, this eats secrets, I'll play it when he's got a secret. Mm-hmm. The skill is playing when they haven't got a secret, play your four mana two four, <clears throat> and doing it without being stupid. All right, so it's no cards versus seven cards, and I'm not sure who's in front. And of course, it is just an ice barrier that's up at the moment. It is, yeah, any fireball, well, the last fireball I think it would be. Pyroblast would kill you <coughs> off. Yep. So, again, you may be tempted to leave this Mana Worm alive. In hope that it goes face. Of course, that's why nothing attacked face last night, so I'm cracking yes. up. Yeah. I'm losing the plot yeah. slowly but surely, because they knew that it was a barrier. Sorry about that, guys. And, yeah, might as well use a Blizzard now, well, because... It's because usually in this position you'd assume it's a block, right? Yeah. Like just natural glance, like, it's fine. So the damage is coming, and... Freezing the Mana Worm stops the trade, which means that more damage will be coming, because Amnesiac's hand has just got very little damage in. This doesn't really help. It just helped trade, though. As of course, saying. Pyroblast probably not in the secret variant as well. I mean, we've seen probably it sometimes. Probably not, actually. Yorg might be. Yeah, Yorg, perhaps. Yorg into Pyroblast. But at the moment, Amnesiac just needs to be delaying and stalling whilst also pushing damage to face. We might see... Frost Nova here, but I suppose you could just Blizzard and it does the same thing and it's using your mana a bit more. Either way, you can push definitely four, if not five, with a ping to yeah, face. Yeah, you, you never want to trade because you know they're not going to attack your face. Yep. So you can just make sure that you have all the favourable trades going your way by just keeping your opponent's board under control. Blizzard seems reasonable. But so does just pinging. I don't know. You might even send some damage to face <coughs> now to free up your mana a little bit in case you were to draw into a Pyroblast, for example. Because Amnesiac is likely to have a Pyroblast in his deck. Seems like he might not have an Antonidas though with that play. Yep, correct, he might not, but he's also running out of time, so he needs to try and win this game quickly. A Mana Worm is Oh my goodness! Whip. And they've still got a Blizzard to deal with all this stuff, even if it wasn't a problem. And Three. Amnesiac now is in a position where he can win the game with some damage from pickup. Three damage he needs to find. Loot Hoarder, he can ping his own Loot Hoarder here if he wants. I think you do, because um, you put your opponent to four, which is Frostbolt ping anyway. So you might as well ping your Loot Hoarder and try and pick up Fireball. Yeah. Murray's already got up out of his seat. He thinks this game's over. It's not quite over just yet. There must be so much burn left in Amnesiac's deck. He's got nine cards there. Have we seen a fireball? I'm not sure we have. I think we saw one. We saw one got counterspelled. Yep. I don't think we've seen a second. Um, both Frost Bolts have gone. There probably isn't much more burn than that, actually. <coughs> um, let's see what he chooses to do. We've seen one Medivh's Valet. The downside of pinging his Lou is, of course, he can't ping... Can't ping face. And he can't ping the one one either. In case that was a thing. Archaeologists will get the second block. Ooh. I think. So what are you... 
But you can't do it now. No. I don't... Oh, you can. Be... Ah, it's absolutely horrible. I mean, that guarantees to buy you another turn, I guess. Oh, whereas Blizzard doesn't whereas guarantee Blizzard it. Whereas Blizzard doesn't guarantee sure. it. So you still send this damage face and you say, okay, they can pop. Of course, you are worried about Eater of Secrets being a possibility now. So that does is... kill you, though. Violence portal! Uh, they would have been dead! They would have been dead. But now they're not. Of course, Eater of Secrets <laughs> would have killed them if Israel have got it. Because they had damage on board. Sure. But... Yeah, they can send this five damage, they can pop, and they can trade, but then we're still in a situation where the United States still need to find their damage as well. This is insane! If they get a big minion from this, then also just killing them with minions becomes possible next turn as well. So this is an important role for Israel. Oh, that's <laughs> the worst! Volcanic Potion wins the game! It couldn't have gone any worse. <laughs> Blizzard or Volcanic Potion I'm not quite sure what Amnesiac was... What, Imaginary instrument that happens there, but I mean, what way do you want to finish this off? You have two ways to do it. What a game! Murray looks <laughs> devastated, and quite rightly, too. He had Amnesiac down to just he popped two blocks and then turn nine defensive Alex Straza. What could go wrong? Yeah, what could go Someone wrong? Someone famously not, said. By not killing the Doomsday, what could go wrong? Well, the USA now two to zero up. Israel, one game away from being eliminated from the global games. Now I can say that with confidence. That is definitely they are a thing. 100% out if they lose. Belgium, however, will be sitting there rubbing their hands closely. They really will, because Belgium have got the best one and two record, I think, of anybody but they might finish fourth in the group. Exactly, yeah, they've got better record than anyone, except, of course, Ukraine have the best third place place at the moment. Third place place? Sorry, but yeah, best two one and two. Yeah, sorry, 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 yeah. But we've still got to finish this series, and Dog has a chance to do it against Glacier, and it's going to be Rogue versus Rogue. Your favourite, isn't it, Lorinda? <laughs> Rogue versus Rogue is every cast's favourite game, I think. Don't you well, agree? I love a bit of... Well, well... If it's Quest Rogue versus Quest Rogue, which we would expect, because as I've touched upon a few times this broadcast, all we've seen being brought to the HCT this weekend is Quest Rogue. No Miracle Rogue, no fancy Aggro Rogue that we saw Tyler bring earlier today as well. Just Quest Rogue. It's like we're playing homage to it because it's being... Homage? Mm. Like it's homage. Is, what's the word? Is it homage? Like, I don't know. It's homage is the word, right? I'm not <coughs> crazy. You can call me crazy. I think you're crazy. Yeah, I'm allowed to be crazy. It's my birthday. I can cry if I want to. Yeah. Wow, that's well out of your era. <laughs> I, I'm in a different generation now, Neil. I know, you, you've, you've I've crossed finally the crossed generation your generation. to my generation, which is very pleasing. Which Also very worrying, because you are very old. <laughs> yeah. And that says a lot about myself. So, Rogue versus Rogue. And I guess we've got a little bit of time now while we wait for players. I can say some more facts. Oh, goody. Love them. I like the facts. Um, I, I, you don't want Canada facts. We don't need them just yet. Um... Oh, Israel have won Eurovision three times. Explain to our non-European viewers what that might be. You don't know what Eurovision is? It's when a band of uh, singers or performers get That's together a band, from, yeah. from each country and perform in a competition to try and be the best singer. And, and it's Israel, always awful. It is always pretty terrible, but Israel uh, have won it three times. Three times. What were the songs called? Uh, well, Neil, you'll have to find out next week. Okay, next week on Global Games, Israel winning the Eurovision Song Contest three times. I tell you what, if Israel qualify for the last 16, I will find out all three of those songs and I will sing them in a YouTube video. Just for you. Go on, Israel, you can do this. You got this. All right, looking at these opening hands, double preparation looks terrible. It can become good in a hurry with a mimic pod. Um, amongst other things, but they do really need a minion. Meanwhile, the United States hand looks nice and balanced. Well, it looks like a fantastic hand. I mean, you've got all the tools there to potentially complete this quest already. You've got Ignis Elemental, you've already got the Firefly on the board, you've got a Shadow Step as well. <coughs> and there's another Ignis Elemental. Of course, Dog was basically the first person to make any progress with this deck. Yep. He got to number one legend with it, with his original version, it included cards like Violet, Teacher, and um, Morose. So behind uh, behind the Israel players, uh, thankfully production pointed this out, it actually says, may the banana be with us. <laughs> because of, uh, of course, Amnesiac last week eating the banana and still losing. So. Yeah. 
So the power of the bananas have not been with them so far, though. Well, this is the thing. Once again, players doing something to try and be a little bit edgy, and it's going against them, just like it did against Amnesia. So you're saying that all the, the teams should just be, like, boring? No, I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm just saying be careful, Neil. You'd rather be careful than boring. Well, wait, I never... I mean, we famously like cast a guy who put up a sign saying, sorry, as a BM, and then messed up the turn and lost, so... We did. Not going to say who that Hello Leroy was, but it was definitely an amusing time. It was a very amusing time indeed. Now, for the United States, they need to find a way to kill off these Ignilus Elementals. As we saw in a game earlier, backstab was uh, the perfect way to do so, but no backstabs just yet. There is a lot of bounce here, though. So actually, the Ignis Elemental might not even matter at this point. Yeah, it's looking a bit ropey, though. By the way, that's a cold blood. That is a cold blood, you're right. But that's a way of generating some damage if things start going really badly wrong. But they just haven't got the the ability to go wide, I don't think. No, that's the shame. And you said it was getting a little bit ropey. Well, now it is getting ropey. Wow. And... Doc yeah. just going with the game plan of building a board. Hasn't even played the quest yet. And this trade is so good. The 2-3 into the 2-3 just because the Ignis Elemental trying to kill itself is yep. so good. And yeah, no quest because he's going to try and do it with Flame Elementals. It looks like that double shadow. He can do what he likes. He can, at this point, he can pretty much do what he likes. On the side of Israel, I mean, both those preparations are kind of sat there doing nothing at this point. It will be fantastic if they draw into a Mimic Pod. It will be fantastic if they can complete the quest, of course. But uh, at this point, they're really struggling to do so. Can't play the second Swashburglar just yet because they've already used one bounce back and they don't want to risk their their actual second Swashburglar being stuck at the bottom of their deck. Right. Uh, this is a hand that can turn good in a hurry. It's, it's currently okay. really bad, but what they really need to communicate here is what are the draws that make this good for us and how do we play to those draws? Because this can actually just turn into a, a very, very powerful hand. Uh, they're looking gutted, though. They've got to recover from that mage game. Look, how did they lose that game? That's, that, they've got to put it out of their heads, but the pace of this show is so quick that, that I think they're roping always just to buy time. Yeah. Just get their brains back in it. It's so demoralizing when that sort of stuff happens sometimes. Yeah, you can see that. I mean, you can just see in their body language that it's clearly taken an effect. It actually looks like someone's sleeping in the background as well. Oh, no, he's awake. Never mind. Just BRB sleeping. Yeah, BRB. KK, LOL. That's what the kids say nowadays, isn't it? Is I it? can say that. No. You can say that. Now I'm in a different generation. You do realise that all the kids see you and me as just old people now. Oh, that makes so me sad. Nice. Makes me happy. Another one joins the club. So finally, I <coughs> believe we're going to see this quest being played on turn four. Yeah, instructive that you just don't need to whip it out there. You can just sometimes take your time and do it when you're ready. Yeah. I guess that's a good motto to go by in life in general. I'm um, obviously still going to need to kill off these Igneous Elementals if they want to get the Flame Elemental route. Uh, always handy to say the Shadow Step if you can, so you can start bouncing Bile Fins and stuff in this mirror match where you want to generate even more 5-5s. Five but obviously, whoever does the quest first is in a really good spot. But do you need to kill these Elementals? Can you not just play Caverns below, play Flame Elemen Elemental, Bounce it back with a ferryman. Bounce it back again with a shadow step. I think step. maybe you do that to give yourself the option, and then see how next turn goes. Because your opponent can play nothing as it stands without you. Not even going to bounce it back. There's that mimic pod that I was talking about that can make this a little bit more interesting. I remember you talking about it quite clearly. Check the vods. Uh, let's see what they get from this mimic pod that Gaskin was talking well, about. Well, there we go. That you were saying this can quickly turn into a good hand. Well, it has. Swashburglar can be played for a second time, then bounce back a third time, bounce back a fourth time, and you've got your quest completed. Yeah, and then the other preparation to get that out there quickly, you've got the boar in hand so and options. able to maybe contend here. The only problem with doing that this turn is you are putting ferrymans on the board that can trade, the Ignis Elemental can trade into. And right. then the quest can be completed very comfortably on the other side. With and a lot of stuff as well. Yeah, but if there's a prep on the other side, then you're worried. That's a decent pickup, by the way, Betrayal. Betrayal is a That's guaranteed pickup. to kill two minions as this yeah. goes on. For two mana, kill two five fives. Maybe we should be taking Betrayal in. Don't give people ideas, Neil. Come on. If I lose that on ladder, I'm going to be so sick. 
So using the Glacier Shard to freeze one of these elementals to try and make this quest a little bit more difficult to complete. But the Shadow Steps will allow this quest to be completed. Of course, he can't complete the quest and play it this turn, though. No preparation to do so. Body language has picked up just a touch from the Israeli team as well. They're like, oh, actually, actually, yeah, a little bit more sprightly. Just as you had pointed out, the, the hand can quickly change for a quest rogue. It looks dismal. Then suddenly you can flip reverse it. That's how reversing works. But yeah, here comes the... The other side of this is that it's still a good hand for a dog. And completing at his leisure. And of course, don't forget when this Igneous Elemental does finally die as a 5-5 or 2-1 or whatever, that's going to make two more one-mana 5-5s. Five and the scary factor is you've got 15 damage out of hand with Stone Tusk Bore into Shadow Step into Bore right. into Shadow Step. And some people don't play Bore anymore. Some people do not play Bore anymore. They just don't want 15 damage from hand. They'd rather backstab something for two because that can be more valuable in some matchups. I mean, that backstab <laughs> early on would have been more What's valuable happening? here, actually. Swashburglar created by Swashburglar. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll that's kind see... of how it works, but even so. <laughs> we will be able to see the uh, the quest be completed here. And of course, you can prep it out as well. Then yep. there is a Stone Tusk bore for Israel to use. How big will the bite weed be if it gets played after that? I don't know, but I think you might actually just want to do what you can to remove as much of the board as possible here. I think you do that by playing the Stone Tusk Boar. But they can clear, what, two minions? Don't forget they've got this betrayal coming up, though. Yeah, but they're just dead. <laughs> because you play the Crystal Core, yeah, yeah, yeah. you send 10 damage to face, you use the Stone Tusk Boar, plus bounce backs, and United States will be moving on to the last 16 with a 3-0 victory. And it also means Belgium move on to the last 16. Unfortunately, this is the end of the road for Israel. But what a performance from the United States. Exactly what they needed as well, Neil. They hadn't looked amazingly strong. We were expecting a little bit stronger, but now this is the dominant side that I really think the community wanted to see. Yeah, I think everybody wants to see the United States through, apart from uh, their worst enemies. But Mexico wanted them through. That's a fact they were talking about a minute ago. And, yeah, it's good to see them through. It's a shame to see Israel go out because Israel have been, along with Bulgaria, who also just went out, have been one of the star performers of this tournament, I feel. Yeah, well, 100%. And we've kind of seen some of the teams that we weren't expecting to do well yep. really shine in Phase 1 and Phase 2. But let's see how the matchup did play out with all of the classes. A very quick game played by the United States. Without Firebat as well, might I add. A 3-0 victory without a world champion on your side. Former world champion. Former world champion, sorry. Um, as I like to remind him of every time he says the world's world champion. Why not be? Oh, but I mean, I, that's a statement from the United States. It really is. Have they won the group? They have won the group. And let's have a chat with Amnesiac and see how he's feeling after winning the group. If we are going to wind up that ready. Hey, dude, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, what's up? I'm okay. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, that was a sweet series of Hearthstone. Oh, yeah. It was a very sweet series. And, like, you now move on to the last 16. You've qualified. But who do you feel are your biggest threats going into the last 16? Young Savage has no threats. Wow. Oh, okay. my goodness. At what point did you realize you might actually win that Mage Mirror match? Because that was crazy. Well, there were a bunch of times where we were like, oh, if this doesn't happen, we're ahead. Like, when they... The first one, if it wasn't Counterspell, we yeah. were just going to win. And then if the second one wasn't Counterspell, we were going to win. But then after that, we were like, oh, we're pretty dead. Then we knew when we drew Glyph, we were looking for Ice Block. We knew how to pace everything out. We got really lucky. Like, we pretty much runnered blocks, one of which just wasn't in our deck. But, like, post-Alex, uh, my teammates were like, how do we get there? I'm like, oh, I actually know what to do. Because I had played that pan out a lot, like, where you have to heal yourself and then get there with minions. So like I knew to play the eater for no value and push damage, and it ultimately dealt like twelve. So we I knew exactly what to do in that scenario, and as a result, we were able to play it out. And like the most interesting turn was the last turn where we were debating whether or not to ping our loot hoarder or not. And I was like, well, there's no downside, and we yeah. found the block which let us play around the firelands portal, which was really good. So like overall, even though we got lucky, we put ourselves in a position to get lucky, and we executed super well. So that was a really good game. 
And when you when that second counter spell went off, you showed no reaction. Is that you getting even more experience? Because there was an amnesiac not that long ago who would have like got upset about that, or is it because you're on a team full of people helping out? Like you it's just not. It's just it's just not productive to to react to it. I don't know. I obviously I, I'm a I'm a mathematical player. I'm an analytical player according to Saddle, and so. It's like I knew that sometimes it was counterspell and that would be bad for us, but it's not productive to react and be upset about it when you can just be spending your energy thinking about how to win the game, which if we had made any mistakes, we would have lost. Yep. So it was, it was just, there's no point. And finally, you're, of course, without Firebat today. I mean, how does that affect the team in general? Firebat's kind of our idea guy. Um, our grounded, jaded competitor. <laughs> uh, dog keeps things light, and Hot Meowth does a lot of research for us. So we didn't really have our idea guy, but since this series was more or less just raw execution and numbers, it was like right up my alley. And game one was just silly. It wasn't really execution. So much. It was just a brutal stomping of the opponent, which you always love to see if you're an Amnesiac fan. But we didn't we didn't really miss Firebat too much. He helps a lot in the preparation phase, and he did this week as well. So like obviously... It sucks to not have him, but I think we did a good job without him. Uh, you definitely did a good job. Very well executed, I think, is what you used. Uh, congratulations again. Best of luck in the last 16, dude. All right. Thanks. Take care, guys. Thanks. Cheers. I mean, the Young Savage, I mean, that was, that was a mic drop moment there, and I was like, who's your biggest threat? The Young Savage has no threats. Like, I thought he might say ourselves. Wow. That was yeah. the answer I was expecting to come Sometimes from there. You explode the Young game. Savage has no threats is definitely a better answer. Yeah, and we'll jump into some of the replays then of that series. A very quick series, of course. The opening game, you might be saying, wait, hold on, how is that vicious fledgling of 13-11? Israel actually buffed it with I mean, a blessing it was turn of kings. Four. <laughs> <laughs> they buffed it with a blessing of kings just because they had already lost. And then this game was a beautiful one, and it will be one I think several people will go back and analyze. Yes. Should Israel have killed the Doomsayer? Did they make the right play? How well calculated was it by Amnesiac? Very well calculated would be the answer. Yeah, and like you said, he's been in that position many times, or several times, and that's always helpful. It's, a lot of these players, they're very, very good at the game, but they also learn things by playing it and learn sort of instinctive reactions. You do only have those 75 seconds. If you've not been in that position before, you will do it worse than someone who has been in that position before. And then we just finish it off with a quick old Quest Road game as well, played perfectly by Dog and being able to output 15 damage from your hand because of the boars just shows why I think people should be considered keeping boars in the deck rather About than the backstab. 50-50 give or take at the HCT this weekend. Be interesting to see which ones dominate in Shanghai when we get that far. Yeah, I mean, potentially the final tournament we'll see Quest Rogue. Of course, there is the dream hack that follows a couple of days later, so we might see Quest Rogue there as well, depending on when the nerf comes through. But let's have a look at the final standings of Group B. United States and Czech Republic go through, but I think a massive story here, Belgium, they finish third and they progress as a third place finisher because of their game difference of zero. It beats Taiwan's, it beats Argentina's, it beats Singapore's. They're definitely through, they're gonna be very happy. But now we move into the last game of the day. It's going to be Canada versus Italy. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back very shortly. We're almost there. Quiet down, everyone. This is not like any of our previous expeditions. This will be far more ambitious. We're stepping into a land of primordial wonder. Infused with astonishing elemental energies. The plant life here holds very unusual properties. So don't touch anything. And while you may be excited to see the local fauna, you might want to make sure they don't see you. Because their powers of adaptation are devastating. Make no mistake, we will be tested at every turn. But if we stay on our guard, we might just survive. Now 
then. Are you ready? Then let's journey into Ongoro Crater.